Greetings, this is Sam from Signal Support. Today we are going to discuss webhooks, how to use them, how they work, and how to understand uh, which event you would need to track in your specific workflow. So we will be using our uh, Sandbox eval account, we'll be using our documentation, and we will be also using our API callback tester service that we provide to our users to test their webhooks and to understand how to create your own callback URL. So I guess we should pr proceed with the documentation first and with some general information, I'd say. So uh, webhooks, uh, if you may already know, is basically a way for an application to provide some other application with a real-time information. Uh, in Sinal, the webhook allows you to track any document or any user actions without uh, without ongoing calls. So basically you are waiting for the action to happen and then you receive a callback uh, payload to your URL that specifies what kind of action happened and to which document. So how do we test this? Uh, we would need, first of all, to take our sample C URL that is provided in the documentation and we'll need to uh, take it and import this C URL in the Postman service that we use for the testing. So to import it, you will need to use import feature. You go for raw, raw text and you just paste the C URL from the documentation. It will import it without issues. However, uh, I will not be using this particular example because it has a lot of the comments that we will need to delete on the video. So I will just use an already deleted comments uh, call. So we should start with the event. So uh, the event part is one of the main um, parts of the webhook and it deserves basically its own documentation uh, part. So the list of event types can be seen as a hyperlink in here. So uh, once you open it and you go to types of events, you will see that we have a lot of event types for documents, for user actions, for templates, field invite events, and so on and so on. There are just a lot of stuff that you can track with the webhook. But for our testing purposes, we will be using the most simple event types, for example, document complete and user document complete, because it's very easy to track those events. So let's go with document complete. And what is the difference between document complete and user document complete? So we'll take this event type here and paste it in our call and we will need to go further. So uh, the event that you choose and the entity ID are two uh, parameters that are dependent on one another. So if you choose any event type that uh, specifies that you would like to track some document uh, for example, document complete, document delete, document open. You would need the entity ID to be a doc document ID that you would like to track. However, if you would like to track, for example, a specific user, so all of the completed documents on a specific user, the entity ID in this situation, so for example, if we go for user.document.complete, in here we would need not the document ID, but a user ID that you would like to track. Uh, basically, it allows you to specify uh, various type of parameters and what you would like to, to track specifically in your situation. If you have a workflow where you need to track all of the comp completed documents in one specific account, and you need to, for example, notify the users about their order or something like this, you would just need to use user document complete and you will have one template email that will be sent to all of the users. However, if you track a specific document, this kind of information can be user specific. And what do I mean by that is that the email that you send out from your system will be to a specific person. So uh, in here, let's go with the document complete and the entity ID, as we've discussed, will be document that you would like to track, the identification of the document. So for that, we can go either 
to our eval account and simply press more copy document ID. Or you can also get document ID with other calls such as uh, folder calls or something else. In here though, we will need to paste our document ID and proceed with the call. So uh, the document, the, the first two required parameters are done. The action will always be callback as of now. And the uh, attributes will have a callback attribute that you'd need to specify for your specific webhook. So how do we take the callback and where do we where, where do we get this from? Uh, in our testing uh, process, we will be taking the callback URL in our test, test callback service. This can be uh, actually used by our clients as well. And it allows you to create a URL like this. You can see that we have a custom callback URL that we can copy and paste in our callback section here. But not only can we copy this URL, we can also check if this URL has any payload sent to it. So for example, you can take this, just paste it here and press view URL. So as you can see currently on this specific URL, we have nothing. We don't have any kind of information, nothing to show uh, that just means that the event that we've uh, specified did not happen yet. So we will need to sign a document based on our document complete action. And if we did everything correctly, we will see some payload visible here. So uh, let's just proceed with the call. Everything else in here is just um, optional. So I will leave it as is, but you can actually check our documentation for all of the optional parameters. What do they do and whether you need them or not. In a nutshell, in here, it's all that we need for our webhook creation call. We'll just send the webhook out. As you can see, I have an invalid token for some reason. So we will go and specify our token uh, directly and we'll create a new token just right now like this we can take the access token and we provide it here so we need to disable any authorization that we have and we will proceed as you can see in here we have a status of 201 that just means the webhook was created, it is operational now, and we can proceed with further displays. So first of all, you can see that you can export your call in CURL. You can see all of the attributes in here. If you would like uh, to save your call or to share your call with the support team. The next step we will need to discuss is how the webhook looks like from your API subscription. So in here, you can have an API tab and you will see that we have a webhooks, uh, webhooks tab that can show all of the webhooks that you have on your account. So you can see we have our newly created uh, webhook from test application. We have our event and we can see that we've just created it with our specific callback URL. The next step would be to sign the document. So to fire the webhook, we will need to go back to our account. We'll just proceed with an invite link and we will need to sign it. For example, in the next step here, it will just take a second. So as you can see, we have some guest signer uh, consent and we will see, let's just go for test and we'll go for test once again. So as soon as we press the done button, the document is considered signed. And in our webhooks, uh, in our callback URL, we should see a payload right away. So if we just reload the page, right here. 
you can see that we receive a callback to our specific URL and we can see the document name, we can see document ID that can be used uh, in subsequent calls. We can see all of the other information such as event, timestamp, environment, and so on. But the most used one is definitely the document ID. So if you track the callback in your system, and as soon as you receive its uh, content, you can just search for document ID and know precisely uh, when to use the get document call if you need some information from the document. In here, you can see our document ID uh, and it should correspond to the document ID we were specifying here, as you can see. So, uh, in a nutshell, the process just looks like this. The only difference is uh, between my specific example and your uh, workflow that you may need is that you will change up events depending on uh, your need. So for example, it can be user type event, it can be anything else. All of the events are specified in our documentation. Also, your callback URL should be different in your uh, system because those ones are just a tester callbacks and uh, you can use them to test the, uh, the system, but you cannot use them to track uh, events because basically they are not tied to your system at the moment. And the last step would be to discuss other type of event uh, calls, webhook calls. So uh, we'll go to the documentation once again, and you can see in here we have the get event subscriptions call that is also used sometimes by our users. Uh, this call allows you to check all of the webhooks that are on your specific basic token. Uh, what I mean by that is there are a uh, type of systems, there are type of workflows that have a, a, like a lot of webhooks and sometimes you receive duplicate calls to your URL and to track the webhooks to basically uh, be sure that you track everything that you need and nothing else, you can use this call here to get event subscriptions but make sure to input your basic token here instead of the access token. Once again, the call is really simple. You just take it as a sample, you paste it in the uh, postman, and you can uh, send out um, send out the call and receive uh, the payload which specifies ID of your of all of your webhooks. So in here, you can see my last webhook from my test application. I can track it, I can delete it, I can update it, and I can basically find it if I need. So uh, I guess that's about it. So what we need to sum up is that the webhooks in Now allow you to track multiple times of, uh, types of events. The events are specified in the documentation and can be uh, found in the as a hyperlink in your create event subscription call. You can use any type of events to receive a payload to your callback URL. And this callback URL, your call can be tested with our service that we provide in the documentation as well. That's about all I wanted to share for today. Thank you for your time. Have a great day.